shifting its focus to coronavirus. Really interesting. We'll see you in a bit. Thanks. As the virus continues to spread and local, state, and federal officials announce new measures, new questions arise, and we're committed to bringing you the answers. Let's bring in epidemiologist Chelsea Boyd with R Street, a nonpartisan public policy research organization. Chelsea, thanks so much for taking the time. First off, when should people be tested? Because I heard New York Governor Andrew Cuomo say earlier today, not everyone with symptoms needs to be tested. Is he correct? The symptomatic factor of this is really that you should be tested if your symptoms are severe, for, sh for sure. But I think the thing that is not getting through to the American people is that it's really important to communicate with your medical provider and call your doctor before you show up at their office or even just make an appointment, ask, see how they're handling the procedure, and they can give you the best answer. Speaking of New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, he's been saying a lot lately. Uh, he also said, look, this is a national problem. There should be national guidance. But each state has its own infrastructure, its own environment, its own uh, geography. That means, I imagine, that this virus could move through each population differently. And I wonder if that elevates the argument for more state-specific guidance. I think that we have an interesting health and governmental ecosystem here in the United States that makes it a little bit difficult to deal with this level of a national emergency, particularly it being a virus that we can't see moving throughout the population. There's definitely going to be a need for specific state and local leadership to make decisions. However, at a federal level, they need to be providing guidance for those public health officials, and also monitoring the success of those programs at a more macro level. And we heard Dr. Burks, who's obviously coordinating the White House's response to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, she said today the number of cases will increase significantly over the next few days before stabilizing. So as we see these numbers increase, obviously people get very concerned. What do you want us all to keep in mind as we see these numbers increase over the next week or so? Yeah, what I just want to drive home is basically the same thing that she said and that Dr. Fauci has said in past press conferences is that really where we are today with this epidemic or the numbers that we're getting today are relics of a few days, even weeks prior. Um, I definitely saw in her description today just in the press conference earlier, that she made a very concerted effort to point out that even some of the testing that we're getting results back on today really was happening a week or two ago. And that bump, and now that we have testing capacity in the tens of thousands, ten thousands, rather than just labs being able to run only one set of 100 tests per day, that is just going to spike our numbers. As long as we continue having testing kits available, we're going to be seeing more detection. This is really just the start of where we're going to get an idea of how far it's spread. Which also parallels Which the also idea, Chelsea, that you may be spreading the virus before you even realize you have it and have the kind of symptoms that may hint to you that you have something like the coronavirus. We have also heard in the last couple of days about how critical the millennial population could be in slowing the spread. For a 20-something watching this tonight, feeling invincible, what should they understand about the threat they may pose if they keep going out in groups, even if they never feel any symptoms? I think we're still discovering exactly what the impact of asymptomatic spread is on the virus. I think that we're going to get a better idea of that in the coming days also as we start getting more testing. Um, we've seen at least one study come out that told us about spread from contact touch surfaces. And those are oftentimes the way that you're going to get it when you don't know how you got exposed is that you touched a doorknob and then touched your face or ate something. I think as far as asymptomatic spread goes, it's certainly a possibility. That's what we're hearing from the authorities. 
However, it also there are also some studies out that show that maybe it's not, or some models from previous countries who have gotten their outbreak a little bit more under control. I think really the most important thing for everybody, and particularly for the people who are having a hard time because they can't work from home, they are seeing their businesses close, is that we need to get this under control as fast as possible. And if that means that we, the millennials, speaking as one of them, uh, need to sacrifice our social lives a little bit, we really do need to do it. What are some of the other things that we should be doing? Still, the personal hygiene is very important. So wash your hands uh, thoroughly with soap and warm water for at least 20 seconds. Wipe down touch surfaces, particularly if you're still having to go out and about for your job. But even in your apartment complex, make sure that if you have to go out and take the trash out, come back in immediately, wash your hands, um, wipe down areas where there could be a situation where someone coughed on a table and then you touch it and infect yourself. I think those are some of the biggest things that we can do right now. And also really keeping in touch with your medical personnel if you do develop symptoms. It's going to be a changing situation now that we have more testing capacity. And at some point those, those guidelines that only the sickest people should get tested, may be relaxed, and they may begin doing more mass testing. Chelsea, uh, we'll be checking in with folks like you for days, potentially weeks and months to come for your perspective. I appreciate you spending some time with us. Absolutely, thanks for having me. A little bit of breaking news as the impact of this virus spread continues. We have our first case of a Congress member testing positive